Welcome to Go Get It. Today we will see the foundation stone of DBMS, that is concept of normalization. But there are certain prerequisites which you need to be aware of, like functional dependencies and their various types. Please watch those videos for better understanding. So normalization. It is a systematic process of reducing the redundancy and avoiding the existing anomalies in the relation. You would have noticed while development that various table will contain the redundant data. Say you are storing some name of a customer in a table and in table A and in table B also you are storing the name of the customer once again. So this is called as redundancy of the data or the repetition of the data. So to optimize the solution, to optimize the structure or the architecture of the database, we have normalization. So we will say it as we will normalize the database into different tables or as required, as per the requirement. So to start with, normalizations are of various types. The first of and the foremost is first normal form or 1NF. As per the CODS rule, every relation or every table should be in a first normal form. This is a minimum requirement for any relational database. So what first normal form says, every relation should contain atomic values. Now what is atomic values? Every attribute position in every tuple in every relation contains a single value of the appropriate type. What does this mean now? Now say we define id for a relation or a table. Now id can always be a unique. Suppose we define the data type of the id as integer. Now we cannot uh, decompose a uh, integer into further. So it contains an atomic value. Now, in contrast, you can consider a name, a full uh, a name of a candidate or a name of a customer. It is it cannot be an atomic value. Now, why? Because a name can contain various parts. It can decompose into three parts: say first name, middle name, or last name. That's why name attribute cannot be an atomic value. That's why first normal form says all the attributes of the given relation of the given table should be in atomic values form. So this is the very first step of the normalization or the very first form of the normalization. Moving on to the further next uh, further forms, we have second and third normal form. So what does second normal form says? A relation is said to be in 2NF or second normal form if and only if the very basic it exists in 1NF and second is it should not it doesn't have any partial dependency now what is partial dependency and transitive dependency and full dependency as i said earlier we have discussed all these terminologies in our previous videos i would encourage please watch those videos for better understanding so second normal form says that it should exist in first normal form and it doesn't have any partial dependency that means a relation if it contains a partial dependency form then it cannot be a second normal form. Now third normal form says that it should be in 2NF form and it should not contain any transitive dependency. So uh, reiterating the transitive dependency definition once again, transitive dependency has two cases. One on the dependent side will have non-prime attribute and on the, the dependent side also will have non-prime attribute. Second case is a part of candidate key plus a non-prime attribute on the dependent side, a determinant side and on the dependent side we should have a non-prime attribute. That makes the transitive dependency definition. So for a third normal form to be existing, it should be in second normal form and it doesn't, it should not have any transitive dependency. Now before we jump to the last or the important normal form that is Boise code normal form or we call it as BCNF normal form, 
we should understand one more type of dependency that is called as overlapping candidate key dependency. Let's name it as OCD. A functional dependency is called as overlapping candidate key dependency if and only if the determinant part of the functional dependency should be any possible attribute combination except the candidate key or the super key. That means it can contain any possible attribute, be it a prime attribute or a non-prime attribute and the dependent part should be only a part of candidate key, not the complete candidate key. For instance, we'll have this relation with the attributes A, B, C, D and E and these are the set functional dependency set. A derives B, B, C derives E and E, D derives A. Now we'll calculate the candidate key here and we found that E, C, D, A, C, D and B, C, D are the candidate keys for this given relationship as they derive all the attributes of the relation. Now A derives B is the, it, it justifies the overlapping candidate key dependency. Why? Because you can see here, as I said, the determinant part, it can be any possible attribute combination. So we have A here. So A is any possible attribute combination. So I said it should be, it can be a prime attribute, it can be a non-prime attribute. So A being a prime attribute on the determinant side and B is a part of, it should be a part of candidate key. And now we see that B, C, D is a candidate key. So B is a part of candidate key. Similar is the case with B, C gives E. B, C is a part of candidate key. Sorry, E is a part of candidate key and B, C is again non-prime attribute or a combination of uh, prime attributes. You can notice here that none of the determinant part is a candidate key or a, any uh, a, a super key. So ED again is a combination of uh, prime attributes and A is a part of candidate key. So this last determinant set also justifies the definition of overlapping candidate key. So diagrammatically you can notice here that X, let's say determinant part is X. It should not be a candidate key or a super key. It derives Y, which should be a part of candidate key. Now let's define Boise code normal form that is BCNF. A relation is said to be BCNF if and only if it exists in 3NF and it does not have overlapping candidate key dependency that is OCD, which we discussed just now. Here one point to be noted here is every binary relation exists in BCNF. Now what is binary relation? Binary relation is nothing but a relation with only two attributes. Now for example here R is a attribute, uh, R is a relation with attributes A and B which has this depend, uh, functional dependency A tends to B and as the definition of Boise code normal form says this is in BCNF. So by default, we can say that every binary relation exists in BCNF. For your ease, we have shared some samples for practice. Here you need to determine the normal form of the given relationship. We have shared six examples with all the answers provided. If you have any doubts or queries, please comment on the comment box. We'll definitely try to solve your doubts. I hope this video has clarified the normalization concept and now you will be in a position to answer all the queries or all the questions regarding normalization. Thanks for listening. Keep watching.